I was raised for the defense of the gospel. Using the 777 we found in the Bible is actually the number of perfection. The number of God. Just like some people who say five is the number of grace. That's, that's an old wife fable. Like they say seven is the number of perfection. That's another mythos. It is called old wife fable. Something that is stupid. You know, so we can now say if seven is the number of perfection, that means seven sons of Skiva are perfection. You know, uh, the guy say, I have kept all of this but one. So if one is the number of God, it means that rich young ruler was in the number of God. Judas Iscariot is the number of God because he is one out of the twelve. It, it just looks stupid and that is just superstition. When people teach the law, they just appear funny sometimes. Now, that means 777 is Christ, 7 is the number of Jesus, mm. is the number of what? Infinite, it means the one who is perfect. This is silly, it doesn't make sense. So every Sunday they go to church to listen to old wife fables, something stupid, something silly. And that's why you find out that some of them are never nourished, they are never matured, they never grow, they are never strong. How will intelligent people in the natural submit to stupidity? Well, again, you know, it's spiritual stupidity. So you have 777, which is Jesus Christ, of course. You have got all biblical numerology going in and stuff like that. Now, that means 777 is Christ. 7 is the number of Jesus. Mm. Is the number of what? Infinite. It means the one who is perfect. Mm. That's why Jesus said, if you are forgiving forgive your brother seven times mm. seven when you say this is an old wife fable what you are saying is this is silly it doesn't make sense well, fable means a fanciful story we just come up with a fanciful story donald means ruler ah uh, he's called donald john trump the voice it also means the bridge or rather the trumpet is the ruler who is going to be what the forerunner of the lord and become a bridge mm. Mm. Teachers of the law who engage in all wife fable, teaching things that we are stupid and things that we are silly. It's it's a myth. It's not real. It's not genuine. All right. It is the number of what? Of perfection in the Bible. Maybe you want to show them that part. If you believe Google more than preachers. <laughs> now here it is according to what? To the American publication, the Orthodox Study Bible Service seven represents the threefold perfection of the Trinity. Mm. Uh, are you getting this? Just like some people who say five is the number of grace. That's that's an old wife fable. Like they say seven is the number of perfection. That's another mythos. It is called old wife fable. Something that is stupid. You know, so we can now say if seven is the number of perfection, that means seven sons of Skiva are perfection. You know, uh, the guy say, I have kept all of this but one. So if one is the number of God, it means that rich young ruler was in the number of God. Judas Iscariot is the number of God because he is one out of the twelve. It, it just looks stupid and that is just superstition. When people teach the law, they just appear funny sometimes. Trump was born on the June 14, which is of course a number uh, divisible by seven. Mm. Yeah. Which was exactly 700 days later when Israel was reborn as a nation. Oh, wow. Trump's first day in office, he was 70 years, seven months and seven days. Triple seven. Oh. Mm -hmm. He was also inaugurated in the Hebrew year 5777. And he beat Hillary Clinton by 77 electoral votes. Mm -hmm. Because seven electors defected. No, they still don't get what I'm trying to say. Trump's birthday is June 14, 1946. Occurred also on the blood moon. Interestingly, Forbes magazine ranked Trump the 777 richest person in the world that time. 777. Mm -hmm. Using the 777 we found in the Bible is actually the number of perfection. The number of God. Who unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter? Saying there is a time that will come. This is the time. Mm. When you see that time, you realize this is what is happening. Mm. The time when people shall call good evil and mm. evil good. Mm. Mm. Who is attacked of being called a liar, mm. being called a liar? It's Trump. Trump. He said, the days are coming when evil shall be called good and good shall be called evil. evil. Hmm. Wow. 
so every Sunday they go to church to listen to old wife fables something stupid something silly and that's why you find out that some of them are never nourished they are never matured they never grow they are never strong how will intelligent people in the natural submit to stupidity well again you know is spiritual stupidity but refuse profane and old wives fables and exercise thyself rather unto godliness now when he says old wife fables notice what he calls old wife fables the word old wife fables is a greek word grossis it has to do with something that is stupid something that is silly it means stupid or silly or something that doesn't make sense when you say this is an old wife fable what you are saying is this is silly it doesn't make sense he now says old wife fables and you know what fable fable means a fanciful story we just come up with a fanciful story all right paul did talk about this quite some in first timothy chapter 1 verse 4 neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith so do he mentioned it now do not forget what he was talking about what was he talking about when he talked about fables there in verse 3 verse 3 because some were trying to teach a doctrine read for me verse 3 of that first timothy as i besought thee to abide still at ephesus when i went into macedonia that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine that they teach no other doctrine then verse 4 verse 4 now says neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions so some were trying to teach a doctrine that was a muthos a fable a fanciful story then by the time he gets to verse 7 of first timothy chapter 1 read for me first timothy chapter 1 verse 7 desiring to be teachers of the law understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm desiring to be teachers of the law so these were teachers of the law who engage in old wife fables teachers of the law who engage in old wife fables, teaching things that were stupid and things that were silly it's like using a koboko to beat satan that's an old wife fable because first of all satan cannot be beaten with a physical cane that's an exercise in futility that's an old wife fable or you are using um you are using fire to roast satan satan cannot be roasted with fire that's an old wife fable you know or you take ribena in a bottle and you pour all over your house and you say that is the blood of jesus covering your house that is an old wife fable because the blood of jesus is not red liquid or you know all of those are old they are silly they are stupid when it comes into the intelligence of the scriptures am i communicating at all he calls them old wife fables second timothy chapter 4 verse 4 let's see the same thing second timothy chapter 4 verse 4 and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables they shall be turned in unto fables look at titus chapter 1 verse 14 titus chapter 1 verse number 14 not giving heed to jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth not giving heed to jewish fables like wearing a prayer shawl i see a lot of preachers they carry that jewish prayer shawl and they put on their neck and they are preaching and feeling cool they are giving heed to silly stuff what is it called silly stuff old wife fables so when you see a preacher wearing that thing they call prayer shawl he is wearing an old wife's fable it's a silly stuff it's stupid because it has no spiritual relevance are we teaching here this morning now so he calls teachings from the law stupid you know paul took no prisoners paul called teachings from the law old wife fables he calls it silly endless genealogies that create questions because that's exactly what the lord did the lord just created questions now notice what he calls old wife fables which is the greek word muthos a muthos is is actually a doctrine a muthos m-u-t-h-o-s is a doctrine a myth a myth a myth is a muthos in the greek all right that that is it's it's a myth it's not real it's not genuine all right it's a doctrine just like some people who say five is the number of grace five is the number of grace that's that's an old wife fable 
because if you call five the number of grace then if it is truly the number of grace it should be five in every language it should be five in hebrew it should be five in greek all right so if grace g r a c e g r a c e five is the number of grace then what is grace in hebrew grace in hebrew is the word chen c h e n four so that cannot be grace okay that cannot be five all right then what is the word grace in in hebrew again it is the word chenan c h e n a n six so that's not five again so what is grace in in greek grace in greek is charis c h a r i s that's six that's not five what is grace in greek it is the word charismata c h a r i s m a t a none of them is five so grace cannot be the number of five it is still one of those old wives fables am i communicating at all like they say seven is the number of perfection that's another mythos one is the number of god three is the number of trinity ten is the number of commandment eight is the number of new beginning twelve is the number of the disciples and on and on all those teachings are muthos they are old wife fables someone took me up and said but there are symbolisms to scriptures i said show me an epistle that teaches you what you have just said there is no symbolism in the epistles the epistles demystifies the symbols of the old testament the epistles demystifies the symbols of the old testament it is called old wife fable something that is stupid because for something to be true it has to be consistent you know so we can now say if seven is a number of perfection that means seven sons of skiva are perfection you know the seven sons of skiva all right that the demons flog them it means they are perfection you know uh, the guy say i have kept all of this but one so if one is the number of god it means that rich young ruler was in the number of god judas iscariot is the number of god because he is one out of the 12. it, it just looks stupid and that is just superstition when people teach the law they just appear funny sometimes just like those who teach redemption of the firstborn and then they have what they call firstborn offering <laughs> you know i wonder how much you can use to pay for a firstborn how much you can use to redeem somebody when the bible clearly tells us for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold but by the precious blood of jesus as of a lamb without blemish read for me so that we have the scripture first peter chapter 1 verse 18 and 19 so any of you that have used money to redeem your firstborn somebody robbed you in broad daylight first peter chapter 1 verse 18 for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers next verse but with the precious blood of christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot the only thing that can redeem a man is the precious blood of christ whether it's first born second born last born or junior born whichever born so every sunday they go to church to listen to old wife fables something stupid something silly and that's why you find out that some of them are never nourished they are never matured they never grow they are never strong how will intelligent people in the natural submit to stupidity well again you know it's spiritual stupidity 